Welcome back to Geek Show Help Hey, Desk we're here. 2424 edition. I Twitter wish edition. we were there. Is this the I second don't. show? Of, is this I the don't. second show of 2024? I, it is. Yeah. Hey, welcome back again. Yeah. It's still 2024. Well, wait, no. This is, is this the first episode? This is the first episode of Help Desk. For 2024, I think, isn't it? What? We no, we missed week. we missed the Christmas week. Yeah, not the, not the week of New Year's. Yeah, uh, that was the week that regular Geek Show was off. Mm -hmm. Okay, we get confused. I, Sneaking Tony, get I do a lot straight, of talking. Buddy. You know. All right, this is the Geek Show Help Desk where we talk about tech gadgets and sciency things. But today, oh, today, dear listener, not a lot of news. Uh, it's it's a slow Owen. week, guys. No slow week. It's all about CES 2025. I thought that was. I thought that was. I thought that was like not a thing anymore. 2024. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't. I didn't know that was still a thing. I didn't really pay attention to it. Yeah, we I know. It was like when you I jumped it was in, like E3. into the dis, into the Slack and said, "Guys, I don't think we have any stories." For I this said week. gaming stories, and then oh. Tony changed. The, cho Tony moved the goalposts, and all no, of a sudden, we didn't. We never and all did. Sudden, and all of a sudden, have you GPUs, seen our sudden, gaming notes, Owen? Have you seen them? All of a sudden, GPUs are not <laughs> gadgets. Now they're gaming news. They're consoles or some sort of nonsense? I don't, I don't know. know. They're consoles. Plug a monitor into them and just <laughs> leave them on your desk and play a sweet game. You guys. Just like he just compared it right to an Xbox. Ridiculous. Hmm. You know that? <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> How would you game on your PC without a, without a uh, GPU? I don't know. Just you find can't. a way. You can I'd find a way. There's, thus, there's games. Thus, it is a there's gaming games. peripheral. Define, it's a define, gaming device. Divine, divine gaming, because solitaire is games, my guy. I don't think that counts. <sighs> hey, in Owen. The context that we are is using. Season two of Will of Time, the best season of TV ever. No, or the second best. You season know that. You know the answer. Right I'm not. I'm not going to let you trick me, Jaren. Just trying to gonna... show his neck beard to everyone right now. That's mm. Well, no. Yeah. I mean, the season two mm. of Wheel of Time is really good, but my favorite thing is everything oh, that George R. R. Martin has written ever since he finished his true. last book. Shut oh, your yeah. I love how he's just focusing on TV now. All he that's does. A, that's a great mouth. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have to. You know, I don't have to. I don't have to. I don't have to put up with this. I. I will. <laughs> I don't have to though. But you will. <laughs> but I will. That's what friends. That's what friends are for. You know. That's what, mm. So, all right, uh, let's see. We are going to forego emails today because we have so much news to talk about. So we will get so much. to your here's emails. The, here's the thing about CES. Next like, week it's or It's such the week a big after. show. You could spend all day for all four days and still not see everything. We tried well, twice. We are trying to weed through the bad stuff and yeah, only we, present the good stuff. We're trying to give I'll, you the I'll highlights. You what, when I used to go to CES, my favorite part was going to the outskirts, seeing all the strange crap mm -hmm. you can find on the outskirts. <laughs> See, yeah. I, I want to. I want to. They have apparently a an adult section, where the mm, no, they do not. They no, do not. No, no, no. They, they do not anymore. Oh it's, yeah. They split they it off, it. and it and it's at its own adult entertainment expo. You know, when, had you gone to CES before, you would have known this. We, I didn't. I couldn't because we, we tried my to rich get you to friends, come two times. My rich, my rich friends didn't invite me. So yeah. well, oh, do no, you have we other did. friends that are rich because your regular friends, us, we Dang definitely it. invited you. <laughs> uh, that one adjective. <laughs> Curses. Uh, all right, Sorry, so let's dive on. right in. Let's dive right in. There's a lot to talk about. There's some highlights and some lowlights. We're gonna hit on the lowlights too. Um, Let's get some of the lowlights out of the way to start with, actually. Uh, and that would be Intel and AMD CPU announcements. <laughs> what, a, what a turd. They're revolutionary. Oh, my goodness. All they did was talk about how they've introduced or are upping their AI performance on the chips with little NPU clusters built onto the, onto the chips themselves. That AMD, was... they announced 8,000 series chips, though. Yeah, and you know what? They're exactly the same as the 7000 series <laughs> chips with no. additional AI performance They're in the NPU. They're a thousand better, Tony. They 7, are 7000, 8000, they are a thousand AI. better. AMD so took much. a page out of Intel's playbook right there and, and Just... released the same thing with a, with a minor tweak and called it a new generation. But to be fair, to Intel. To be fair. Thank you. Intel did the same thing this year as well with desktop chips. So they they announced uh, two lines of mobile chips from Intel. You have the uh, 14900 HX and uh, 
HXK, I want to say. Anyway, they're exactly the same besides the i7. They did the same exact thing they did with desktop. The i7 and the i5 are identical with slight frequency bumps, and the i7 just has more efficiency cores. With Didn't slight, Intel just with get on AMD's case bumps. for mm -hmm. um, putting out stuff that and like miss? naming it to trick yeah. consumers yeah yeah right a intel's been doing it for years you remember when they were stuck on uh on uh 10 nanometer no 14 nanometer <laughs> for what six years in a row yeah, right so i mean uh, yeah it was the pot okay so when kettle black for sure so when intel called out amd it was more out of hey that's what we do stop that <laughs> yeah hey, hey, hey that's our trick <laughs> what are you gonna do it's like calling in your weed dealer what yeah, are you gonna exactly. call the police on so yeah that was uh the, the one new thing that they did announce had already been pretty much thoroughly announced, and that would be the um, Meteor Lake stuff. They talked a little bit more about the Meteor Lake stuff. They introduced their Intor, Intel Core U line, which is just the new name for their ultra uh, low power mobile processors. Um, 150, the, the i7 150U comes with 10 cores. And guess what? You only get two performance cores in there. Two performance Yeek. cores and eight efficiency cores. Wow. Uh, How yeah. many efficiency cores equals a performance core? Is yeah, exactly. Right? Nobody really knows. I mean, it's just one of those things that's like, yeah, they're good for it, I promise. And they can be if, if programs are written to utilize it, but Windows still doesn't do it very well. And Stinging Windows. Intel is on its uh, third generation with performance cores and efficiency cores. So hmm. it do, it does it better than it did at launch. Don't get me wrong, but it's still not great. Uh, so there you go. That was really the Intel announcements and the AMD announcements in a nutshell. They're nice. not that not that much different there. And uh, they're one better. If Exactly. One better on the number that represents what you're looking at. So when are the true 8000 series Ryzen processors going to come out? That'll probably be announced at uh, either the end of this year in the fall or CES next year. Really? That long? It's. I think it's... They don't have to. They I release think something. I Q3 at the earliest is is what the speculation I've read, or at least what I what I would say. Because They're waiting to, waiting to see what Intel drops out and... I mean, I guess Intel just well, did the same thing, but here's the thing: they still they're still in the lead, basically, right now mm -hmm. with their desktop stuff. Even after Intel dropped their 14th gen stuff, right. it still wasn't any better than what AMD had on the market. So they're already sitting in a good spot. They're not. They don't need to be in a right. rush to. They're like, yeah, we don't need to. We don't need to. Don't no, they can. They can just sit there and tweak the stuff they've already got going. So it's even better when they, when they uh, actually do launch it. Welcome so. to Tweak Town. Tweak Town, baby. All right, uh, we can mark that off the list. We hit the CPU stuff. Uh, let's okay. Let's talk about Apple. They wanted to uh, try and upstage CES with all yeah. the same news they already gave out, except for <laughs> a date. <laughs> they they announced that they would uh, talk more about the Vision Pro in early January, and lo and behold, <laughs> they have. It will come out uh, in February, February second. Pre-orders begin January nineteenth. That's pretty at, soon. 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Um, and again, it's going to cost $3,500. $3,500. Ooh. That doesn't, never uh, sounds any better, does it? No. no, it does. no. Spec for spec, what does this compare to? Like, what's something? Is it? Is it? Mm, does it have I, a competitor it that has, we can compare price to? It has a nice screen. It's OLED. Uh, it's not extremely high refresh. I think it's only 90 hertz, if I remember right. I think, okay. I think 90 is what um, it maxes out at currently. But but it seems like their software, of course, is going to be good. Yeah, okay. And if, if they draw the developer support, then it could be a, a, a good product. Not it at $3,500. Yeah, I'm trying will, to carve away. How much, no. how much of it is... I always try and carve out what's the Apple tax yeah. on a device. I well, bet you there's a lot this one. The first gen of yeah. a brand new product, there's a ton of Apple tax on this one. Yeah, it needs to come down in price by at least half. At least. and uh, Well, the other thing to mention, too, is it will have an M2 in it. Or, or is it an M3? Anyway, M2. M2. It's M2. M2. It'll be an M2. So in that aspect, it will be the most powerful standalone headset on the market okay. because the M2 is pretty awesome. But 
for that further that furthers Jaren's point that if if developers don't flock to it, it doesn't matter how powerful your it means your its battery life is. will be pretty good too, right? No, like, actually, it's pretty bad battery life. Wow. It's two and a half hours watching Ooh. like a movie. So you can okay. get through, right? uh, or was it one and a half? It's it's not that long. It's I think wow. it's like I think it's two and a half because you can half. get okay. through most movies, but nothing by like Martin Scorsese. Yeah, or, yeah. yeah. <laughs> which tells me they're doing a lot with or, that M2 chip to do a lot Snyder. of processing power and stuff, right? Um, and speaking of developers, they they are telling their developers not to call their apps AR or VR. <laughs> what do you, what do they want? Virtual to call reality them? or augmented reality? They want their developers to call them spatial computing apps. Jesus, uh, so oh, they're doing That's what the they do best. They're, they're trying to gaslight the entire industry and saying, yeah. oh, mm-hmm. hey, we did spatial it's computing first. It's not yeah. gaslighting. It's called marketing, Jaren. Hey, guess what? There's That's those what a gaslighter would say. Razor thin line <laughs> yeah. there. Where's right James there. when you need him, right? <laughs> yeah, it's the same thing. It's called yeah. marketing. It's what marketers do. Indeed. You wouldn't get it. You're in the I know that. I know that James's ears are tingling right now. You know where James is right now? Speaking of James, yes, CES. Oh, is he really? Yeah, down there for work. Mm, I think he just went for fun. Oh wow, he wouldn't come when we invited him to go what? for fun. Yeah, hey. <laughs> pair of donkey balls that guy has. Uh huh. Hmm. You should wow. text him, Tony. Hmm. Be like, hmm, hmm, huh? Well, mean, all right then. Not surprising. Let's move on to something to bring my mood up. That soured my <laughs> mood. Sorry. You know what always brings my I didn't it didn't really, but you know what always brings my mood up when I'm feeling down? Smoked meats. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's mm. right. There is a new smoker being debuted by GE that is very interesting. GE, you say, they don't do smoking. They do appliances they though. Do so appliances. that's a trust, That's a trusted that's a trusted thing. What the hell Yeah, you that? know what? Sounds like you have an appliance that is beeping at us. Oh, it's my son's <laughs> diabetes. Sorry, oh, I, I thought it was the UPS. Now I feel nope. bad. <laughs> that one that one is allowed. Tony, allowed. come on. <laughs> that one's fine. Don't turn that off. Jeez. I'm gonna go check on my son, see if he's okay, Tony. Uh, uh fine. Oh, <laughs> Get hope out you of feel here. guilty now, Tony. Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> Owen's oh, lame. All right, my, my UPS will go off in about ten minutes, and it'll yeah. all ruin. It'll ruin you'll, all. You'll no, just that. just blame it on the diabetes. Oh, I should have done that for <laughs> every me. time. Thanks. New excuse. Yes. Let's go. Let's go. You gotta be thinking devious, like Jaron is all the time. Mm. All right, so he's is shifty, isn't he? Big time. Uh, With those eyes. This is called the. GE Profile I Smart Indoor do Smoker. Have pretty eyes. Thanks, Lando. <laughs> it's getting weird. I said you um, have shifty eyes. No, you said look at those eyes. Shifty. I, They're I know shifty. what you mean. Yeah. Sorry, anyway, Tony. Go ahead. Guys, I want to know more about the smoker because I'm actually in the market guys done. for a smoker. All right. So this is GE's new tabletop indoor smoker. Indoor tabletop smoker? Indoor Tell appliance. Me more. It's roughly the size of a small, one of those Wait, small fridges. Oh, Tony, okay, okay, Tony. Tony, okay. Can I How put do this you in have a office? smoker inside? Where does the smoke go? Well, it's all sealed up so that the smoke just stays inside the device. And would that work? It, yeah, that, wouldn't that the, would wouldn't actually. Wouldn't it lose temperature over time? So like the, enthalpy is a thing. Nope, because it uses electrical element for heating. Mm-hmm. So it uses an electrical <laughs> element for heating, but it right. has it's crashing. Your yeah. face looks like it's having it has a stroke. A, it has yeah. a it has a container for pellets for wood pellets okay. that you put in there, and it smolders those pellets. Okay. But uses an electric, um, the heat. yeah, an electric, and doesn't and it doesn't matter. Like it's not a direct heat thing because that's not how smoking works anyway. It's just a heating element in there that keeps. It's like the if you smoke hot. Really. Like, yeah, just mm-hmm. like if you put smoke wood chips in your oven, like this is akin to... A, right, so it's just a sealed oven. That's yep. what it's a sealed is. oven. Exactly. It's a sealed oven. Okay, we got to the bottom of it. My brain works now. It has a... Uh, what are they calling it on here? Um, an... Uh, the smoker sm- u- a it looks so-called, small, though. Look at, well, like I'll get to that. Inside. A so-called active smoker fil- smoke filtration technology that employs a catalyst system to create smoke from wood pellets and combine it with the so electrical heating. So you get a cleaner oil. smoke? You don't get, so, like, the particulates well, from uh, I don't know about that, but hmm. the point is is that they, you know, you'll be able to open it um, and not have your smoke alarm go off. I'm betting it's ah, got, a, okay. I'm betting it's got okay. a fan and, a like, a ca- like a kind of like a catalytic converter is what I'm betting yeah. that removes 
certain particulates from the air. Catalytic converter? I'm betting it has something similar to that that pulls the smoke out before you open the uh, open the door. But anyway, size wise, it they don't give exact measurements, at least in this article. But they have said that it will be able to fit uh, a brisket, three racks of ribs, uh, up to a up to a 16 pound pork butt. Mm. Does that look like that in that picture? Does that look like it holds a brisket? I think like, that are they I think talking that about like a. a a portioned brisket? There's no way yeah, that's If you take out, way, if you take out the top shelf, maybe. Yeah. I'll bet, I you have to take out, I'll bet that there's more to it than what you're seeing. I think a third of the front is covered by the that uh, panel for your controls, but I'll bet there's more space behind that panel right. for stuff to sit. But yeah, it's. Uh, hmm. I don't think you'll be able to do a 16 pound brisket because no. a 16 pound pork butt is very spherical. Like. Yeah, it ta- I can it's, maybe it's see volume that is now. its volume is in a more confined space, whereas a brisket is you know it flops out. It's much longer. It's flatter. Yeah, it's flatter, right? So because like you got, a... but you could cut it into two sl- into two sections and probably do like the yeah. point on one rack right. and the and the flat on the rack underneath. So, <laughs> but joke, yeah. So very interesting uh, what they said here. Uh, what was some other? Uh, oh, 14 pound pork butt. Sorry, not a 16 pound. They say up to 40 wings at a time. I go for some wings right now. So they gotta, that's got to be bigger on the inside. Like, it's, right? a, like, it's a TARDIS smoker. Yeah, it's a tar- I mean, It's got a TARDIS going on there. But I'm or maybe that picture isn't to scale or something because I'm <laughs> very scale. I'm very very curious about this because um, smoking in the winter is not super fun. I it's still cold. do it. I still do it cuz I love it, but it would be cool to be able to just do it inside if you yeah. had the option. Now, it is a little pricey, but if you were to use it as a dedicated smoker as like your only smoker, it's actually not that crazy. It's it's going to start at a 1000 bucks. Uh however, of a, a medium Medium uh, quality smoker is usually between eight hundred to a thousand bucks. Yeah, really curious. Well, so that's, what the well, that's for the me- medium this. to high end, not right, not super hot pellet smoker. Anyway, smokers can range anywhere from four hundred bucks up to six thousand dollars. So yeah, well, and this one's curious because it's got the drip pan underneath. You can see, but it also yep. looks like it might just fit under your cabinets in your kitchen, like a normal appliance. Yeah, that's the thing. Right? It's, like it's, it, it looks like be... it's built to be moved off the counter yeah. when you don't need it. So. Yeah. So, or or pushed underneath cabinets if you did want if you had a big enough kitchen that you're like, mm-hmm. that's just my smoker appliance, like a new like a toaster. Yeah. You, yeah, cool. you could definitely build that into a, into a cupboard or something, into a shelf. So I think you could fit a toki a toki a turkey in there. Uh, maybe it does a not small look like one. you could. A small one, right? Like a four, like a, a thirteen chicken. pound, maybe. I'll bet you could a uh, chicken for of... sure. Chicken for sure. I'll bet you could fit a twelve pound turkey in there though. Yeah. Wow. I want to 10, see what, 10 or 12. what how this reviews. I'm That's very what, yeah. curious about. I really this. want to see what people think of it. I follow a couple of different smoking channels on uh, YouTube because, of so course, you do. I'm sure that they will uh, review it when it when it comes out. Uh, let's see. Let's talk about uh, another thing that I think is really cool looking: a new laptop RAM standard. This is a long time coming. Yep. Um, SODIM, which is the current standard that we have for laptops, right. it's been out for quite a while, um, and it's we, we have a new new uh, alternative coming here for for standards called LP Cam Two. Oh, it's just called Cam Two. Oh, Cam Two, but the what LP Micron is for low power. What Micron is putting out is called LP Cam Two RAM, yeah. and it it's using LP DDR Five X RAM. Um, but it takes up 64% less space than SODIM memory, uses 61, 61% less power, Gotta and are 71% faster in PC Mark 10 essential workloads. That's what you call a win, win, win. Yeah. yeah. Triple win. Uh, so it, it, you don't just slot it in like with SODIM, you screw it in, um, which I, I'm fine with because a couple just, screws, no big deal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's not often you're upgrading RAM, so it's not like you have to. Take, mm-hmm. put it in, seat it in, take it out, and really should help it stay seated better so it doesn't accidentally come out like some RAM oh, modules. For, for laptops, that's better, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Sure. Like that's, you might that's, not, a, that, that's a good thing, I think. You might not drop your laptop, but you might drop the backpack that your laptop is in. 
And so the laptop doesn't actually get damaged, but it jostles it enough that maybe the RAM comes loose, you know? Yep. And it's better than soldering the RAM onto the the CPU die. <coughs> Apple. Oh, yeah. Uh, and this is, the, and this is the new... Yeah, this is the new craze for a bunch of com- computers yep. that... I hate it. Razor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Razor. Yeah, it's very consumer unfriendly. Um, like, Tony, you just bought a laptop, right? With only 16 gigs of RAM. Yeah. You're just going to pop a... it open, put in new RAM, yep. and boom. 100 bucks, I'm going to get a 32 gig kit and slap it in there, and I'll go from, I'll double my RAM for 100 bucks in uh, five minutes. Yeah. You know? yeah. Versus, versus if you tried to do that at the build, you'd pay 150 more. You know, like, Easy. You'd be paying easy. 200 plus more just to double that RAM. Yeah. yeah. I wish they you could do that on uh, the gaming handhelds. That'd be so great. Oh, oh that yeah. would be rad, for sure. So there you go, new new uh, laptop RAM coming down the pipe, and it looks very promising. I hope that uh, it is adopted quickly and produced in mass so that it comes down in price. And so this is going to be lower power consumption, right? So this yeah. is about extending battery life. This will be cool. Well, and it performs better. It's right. it's a win win win. Good good win all yeah. around. Oh, let's see. Uh, we should talk about the Samsung Sound Frame. Oh, that's that's not the one I want to talk about. But this that, this one's cool too. This Which one's one do cool you want to too. talk about? I want to talk about the micro LED screens, the okay. transparent ones. No, let's talk about that one after the Sound Frame because the Sound Frame isn't as cool as those. It's true. We'll save. Those I'm for excited the next for this one. because it matches my TV, right? So. Samsung's doing this thing where they're making frames, they're doing stuff, right? So they introduced us, or they didn't introduce, they announced at CES they're going to be doing what's called the Samsung Sound Frame. And it's exactly what you think it is. It's a speaker built into a frame. Does it have a screen on it? Art. What? Does it have a screen on it? No, no screen. It's, a, it's, 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 it's essentially a Bluetooth speaker, but it can um, link with your your um, frame TV like I have. Right. So you guys oh. actually use this. Yeah, it seems like a companion gadget. Yeah. Mm, that's exactly what it is. You can also use it for surround sound. But it says as it can. Well. It says it camouflages as a modern picture frame that can display art or photography. So you put in your own picture. I you can, can yeah. put your own picture you, in. Yeah. yeah, you could use it around other pieces of art. It doesn't have to be a frame TV, but other piece of art. Yeah, unfortunately, no, there's no there's no price um, out yet. But the IKEA frame speaker and the Sonos ones are right around two fifty. Uh, so this is probably going to be right in that same range, I would guess, or yeah, at least for... the article guess. A frame subwoofer, or do you still have to get a regular subwoofer? You still got a regular subwoofer. There's no Samsung frame subwoofer. Mm. Imagine so, a subwoofer at, in that thing, and it'll vibrate itself off of the nail <laughs> on the wall. <laughs> yeah. I'm, right off I'm the wall super or... stoked about this because <laughs> yeah. my wife won't let me put up my soundbar that we bought because it's ugly, and this fixes that problem. I can give me better speakers for my TV instead of my TV speakers well, have you um, thought that about are not ugly. Not having an ugly soundbar. Yeah, I don't have yeah. one right now. I'm using my TV speakers. It's the worst. Feel, feels like you could have phrased that more nicely. Mm, she knows how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> well, well played. All right. <laughs> I mean, this is no this, secret. This is not untrod territory. All right. <laughs> I, 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 I was. I mean, extending an olive branch for you. Nope. I appreciate it, but no, my soundbar <laughs> is olive not being used at the moment. Refused. All right. So anyway, they're cool. They look cool. They, I mean, who knows what yeah. they sound like yet? I, I, I expect I would, they sound pretty okay. Yeah, that's probably a good way to put it. Pretty okay, yeah. Better than your TV speakers, I would assume. Ah, uh, well, yeah. So, All right, now let's talk about TV tech, the micro LED. This is cool. It's Feels like cool. transparent TVs were all the rage this year. Mm. Big so time. This, LG not, showed some off, too. Yeah. This is what gets me excited about tech. What the crap is my cat doing? Stupid cat. Sorry. Um, every once in a while, this is what gets me excited. Every once in a while, you see something and go, that's cool. This is the future. That's something I've never seen before. So this is the transparent micro LED from Samsung. And it's exactly what it sounds like. It's literally a pane of glass that you can see through, but has micro LEDs in it. So you, you can have a full display that's hmm. see-through. It literally looks and feels just like the future. This that's sounds cool. so cool from like a futuristic perspective. But I cannot think of how this would be useful from a consumer perspective. Like, 
I'm sure companies will love it because they could display ads this, on it. I was going to say, oh, this, absolutely. This, this is, is commercial for. market stuff for yeah. sure. Yeah. Huge. But still, like, it's just super cool. Watch the watch the YouTube video. It gives you a kind of a sense of what it like feels so, like to actually see it in person. But apparently, it's super dope. Now, do you remember the concepts LG was showing off when we went to CES a couple times, Jaron, with the see-through OLEDs? Yeah. The I think Samsung ha had mm -hmm. one too. But uh, the coolest thing that I saw, and it, admittedly it's niche, but it would go really well in uh, in between if you're if you have a great room that is a kitchen as well, you know, a big room that has both. Put it in between yep. those two. Oh yeah. And you'd be able to see into the great room through the TV when you wanted to, or turn it on when you're cooking in the kitchen. And, and see everything backwards? I can't wait. No, till... it'd be facing towards the kitchen. It'd be the kitchen TV. Or maybe it's reversible, it. Jaren. You can okay. watch from either side. Well, that's an okay. idea Okay, well. uh, that, yeah. that, is a, that, that is a good use case. To I, well, like I, I said, that's I can't niche, wait till all. You know? I can't yeah. wait till all it... buildings... I can't wait till all buildings use this as glass, and then they're all mm. one giant to say the exact or, thing. Glass you know, or mirrors. That's pretty much what the L the uh, Las Vegas sphere is almost. <laughs> right? Mean, oh that thing's man, I wild. That. Have man. you seen it up close? No. The, the the pixels on that are like the size of a hockey puck. Yeah. And they're, they're spread out like every foot. Like they're pretty far apart when you get close to that thing. It's sweet looking. It makes sense, yeah. But anyway, this I mean it's just it's it's literally glass with micro LED on it. it I, wonder, so, I wonder how the black levels are on cool. this. That's yeah. a good question. It's a joke, guys. There are probably, no black levels because you can see through probably, it. Probably not oh. great. <laughs> there we go. Anyway, well, this that, is one of those ones. Like, I've been following CS stuff, but this is one that stuck out to me. Is like, that's cool. Yeah, LG also announced see-through OLED TVs that you can actually buy this time as Ooh. well. Yeah, the T that's series. Better than the Samsung one. They're called the OLED Signature T, and uh, they are. Let's see, seventy-seven inch. I think they come in a sixty-five as well. Anyway, um, this one does have black levels, though, Jaron, because what? when yeah, when you want to use it, a screen unrolls behind oh, it. Really? That's okay. wild. Okay. Yep. Okay. So that you can't see through it. That's and kind of funny. Yeah, I, I mean, I, it's a simple but genius way to take care of that. So, yeah. Once it, that well, once that company comes back with the contact lenses, you know that I was that I'm following. Oh, that's um, uh, nope. Once they'll be able to. <laughs> You'll be able to have these type of things all the time. Like any piece of glass becomes your screen, you know. Uh, that it's still not real, Owen. It might. It might be. We live <laughs> in a we, we live in a we live in a time of multiverse. A t the time of multiverses, Tony. It's real somewhere. <sighs> That's it's going to happen mm -hmm. at some point in the in the far flung future when yeah. microprocessing and battery tech have caught up with the dreams of mm -hmm. Mad and Men. And when we have and when and when we have the ability to replace eyeballs. That you're gonna have some batteries that go rogue, so. But I'm there for that. All right, so yeah, that looks pretty cool, and it's gonna be super expensive. Uh, well, actually, not. Oh no, no, no! I was looking at the wrong price. Yeah, super, super expensive. expensive. Super expensive. Yep. Yep. They don't have a price for it. That expensive. If you have to ask, <laughs> you can't afford it. You can't afford it. The last big thing they ro they rolled out, pun intended, was the LG Roll. TV, you remember that it would unroll and and slide up. I yeah, I remember those. I remember I that. Was, I like those. Yeah. Hundred thousand dollars was what that caught Good cost when it, when it actually launched. So, you know, I'm not saying this will be a hundred thousand dollars, but expect it to be uh, very pricey. I was like, I was like, I'm gonna get one of those for my RV. And nope. I'm not putting a hundred thousand dollar TV That's in my worth in more my, than your RV. Yeah, by a lot. <laughs> by a lot. LG also announced new OLED tech. They're calling it Meta 2.0. Yeah, it will bring the brightness up to three thousand nits. Can you believe that? That's a lot of nits. That so the the C10 like I have, I think it goes up to eight hundred nits. Yeah, ours do eight hundred, um, I believe. So like three thousand nits, that's LCD territory. So yep. combine that brightness with complete black, it it'll it's, make for a stunning display for sure. It's brighter than the Samsung Cutie OLEDs. Yeah. So yeah, it's crazy because they they did some more refinement to the micro lens array technology on those and uh, AI algorithm things in their new chip. They say you know of course AI. It's the answer for everything. Mm. It is. Everything has to have it. It's probably just like a, some standard algorithm that they just called AI. Probably. 
Now, is that coming out in anything this year, or is that concept right now? I think it's concept. I think it's a concept. Right. Yeah. So, the but the new micro lens array stuff is debuting in the LG TVs this year uh, with the G series and the M. I want to say they have a they have a ser- they have a they have a series above the M. M they, is they M just new? Started doing Didn't last even know about year, M. I think. LG M series. Let me see. Um, but it, yeah, LG M series. So that's their like tippy top of the line. Tippy top. So for instance, last year's last year was the first year they started the M series, I believe, and you can get a ninety-seven inch OLED from Best Buy, the M seven or the M three ninety-seven inch. It's still only twenty nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars. Oh. Only that. Only. Well, compared to a hundred thousand dollar rollout TV. Yeah, right? <laughs> right. It's budget right there. <laughs> you want to see the the scales of uh, the reverse scales of economy on that, mm-hmm. or I should say the uh, the issue with uh, making it that big is if you just drop down to the M series, the M3 77 inch, that one's 4,500 bucks. <laughs> right. Wow. Yeah. That actually sounds affordable. <laughs> exactly. It's, when compared to 30 grand, it's 20 inches lo- smaller, but still. Sign me up. There you go. So. Oh, what else happened? Lots of good stuff. Let's talk about uh, bringing bringing the BlackBerry. No wait, the Palm. No wait, the Nokia experience. Hey, who to crossed the out Palm? Who crossed out Palm? <laughs> this guy right here. Nice, good job, Tony. Oh. <laughs> palm will make a will make a comeback. I'm telling you. Even though they the company sure doesn't they, exist anymore, yeah. they sure won't because their OS is what powers LG TVs now, <laughs> which are awesome TVs. <laughs> they are. They are. Anyway, um, a new company uh, called Clicks, started by Mr. Mobile and Crackberry Kevin. Um, Who? Is it their YouTube personality? <laughs> Gotta or be those. Yeah, <laughs> those are influencer names for yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, the the product though looks pretty interesting, and I'm huh. kind of interested in it. Come on. <clears throat> it it is a silicon case for your iPhone, which has a clicky keyboard on the bottom. All, uh, it's more Palm style than BlackBerry style. Um, like it, they're very round keys rather than like the BlackBerry squarish keys, you know. Um, yeah. But you just slot your phone in there, and it becomes a keyboarded super long. iPhone. Yeah, it becomes super long. <laughs> um, it is so very it, long. It pl- plugs directly into the iPhone, so you don't have to worry about Bluetooth. Oh, nice. um, it has pass through charging. Um, since and, it's not Bluetooth, it won't use hardly any of your battery either. Right, right. So yeah, there's basically no battery drain on it. It it's backlit, so that'll probably be the most battery drain. Probably yeah. not much though. Um, but the the only downside is it'll make your phone like a foot long, especially Huge. especially if you have the Max. Right. Um, well, yeah, I could see yeah. I can see application for this for for the disabled community, right? Like they could do mm. a Braille one. They could do a Braille keyboard. You know, and let people. I wonder start if can you texting. do Braille that small? Oh, it's only one letter at a time. So yeah, yeah, you yeah. could. That's a yeah. good point, Owen. Do some do some stuff because I'm like I don't want a keyboard since you know you don't need this I mean, unless uh, you're really you know this serves two disabled communities the people with OCD that really <laughs> you need it the gotta have and, those cookies and Braille you know like yeah like the visually disabled. I, I loved my Palm Pre, so this is like that the keyboard on it. Is, this is tempting. Is it stirring? I loved. It, is I, it loved stirring? I loved. I loved. I, I, I blasters, my guy. But you know what? We don't get to keep what we love. <laughs> right. Move right. on. Jaron, is this stirring old emotions? In it you, is. In it your is. loins. I feel it in my gro- loins. Um, <laughs> gro- groins. <laughs> gro- loins. <laughs> this will cost. I think one hundred forty dollars, unless you have. Not- Unless you have the current iPhone 15 Pro Max, then it'll cost like 170, 160, yeah, 160. It's actually okay. not terrible price wise, if you ask me. That's Anything if it's good, if it's good quality. If it's good quality. Yeah. The thing that price. sucks about this is you can only buy it. You have to buy it for every phone you. Yeah. Get right. So every time you get a new like phone, a case, you get a new right? case. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you would. Unless it's no, no. Apple changes the design every year. So every yeah, year. Apple changes you, you the size no, just have to. so slightly. I know um, folks. I know folks that spend a hundred plus dollars on a case um, every time case, they upgrade. Yeah. Looking yeah. at you, Uncle Squinky. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> hmm. 
Yeah. yeah so so if you he, buys the yard... these, he buys these baller, like titanium frame cases. They're uh, freaking sweet, but they are cool. pricey. Well, um, get one with the keyboard. So two worries with for me that I have on this. One, uh, it's so tall, I've measured, it would stick out of my pocket. <laughs> You've measured, of course you have. Um, and then two, it's mostly made out of silicone, well, and the silicone cases Jer- do not last very long. Jaren, because if you, of the- wearing, if you stop wearing girl pants, it wouldn't stick out of your pocket. <laughs> I am a small half person. Oh, because it, okay? it got the half pockets for those girl jeans. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> You know the two why, why do you say it like that? Uh-huh. There's two sections of the store. There's the men's and the women's, right? So you need to go to the men's section. And then there's the in-between. That's yeah. where I go. The in-between. The in-between section. <laughs> Not yet, anyway. <laughs> Jaren's in-between. So if, uh... if this wasn't silicon, I'd be a lot more tempted to get it because it just it wouldn't last. I hope that it's silicone. And not silicon. That would well, be whatever. hard and sharp. Oh, whatever. it feels good. You know, it feels good. You know oh, what I mean. Oh, that feels good. <laughs> oh, it feels so good. <laughs> you like that, Owen? I'm not alone. It's not you this time. It's not me this time. I'm like, sil- I, I know every time I w- say the word silicone or silicon, I'm going to take a beating. There is a 50% <laughs> chance that I'm going to that I'm gonna take an emotional you're, you're beating. You're going you're gonna to mess it up. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I will be there at your doorstep. You will always have been <laughs> ready and willing to hurt, help me remember. Uh, hurt you. <laughs> yeah, I subscribed to you. the video on this thing, and it make like you don't realize how long it makes your phone until you actually see it against someone's hands. Oh, it's very real. long. So yeah. what they well, what they should have done is only have someone with really big hands to demo it, so it would look smaller <laughs> than it actually. Is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think so, it'd be okay for just the normal right? iPhone size, but for the yeah. Max, that's pushing it. If they were yeah, still they, the they mini. needed they needed to tap Shaquille O'Neal for this. Like See? it would look normal look, in his hand. It would look like a tic tac in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you you get all that screen real estate back. The virtual keyboard won't come up while you use this. True. That's and fair. so it's it's but, cool. I want it. Mm. You, you know what I really it. want? Here's what I want. I want this. Th- I want the same thing, but I want it for when I turn my phone sideways and have it slide out. Like the I know. Phones. Ooh, I totally yeah, agree. That's what I want. I just like wouldn't. Sidekick, that right? would not work. It'd be. Not, it would why be wouldn't so it work, weird. Jaren? It would be kludgy. It'd be a big giant rather, kludge bomb. But wouldn't you? Just but wouldn't like you Jaren's rather go Windows setup? Wouldn't you rather go? Hey, that's <laughs> elegant. I will take a picture of it right now and make you look at it. I want to see your registry. Bomb. That's what I want to see. Jared, just the other day was like, Tony, when you start Alan, when you start Alan Wake 2, do you have to re-enable and disable DLSS 3 every time and then restart the game? (laughs) I'm like, what are you talking about? (laughs) No. Nobody's doing it. I will not reinstall Windows (laughs) until it's easy. Then I will. Oh, all right. Well, we'll keep an eye on that. It looks cool. Maybe, maybe Jaren will get one to review sometime this year. Might be, might be Uh, neat. <laughs> I mean, I'd, I'd review one of these if 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 it were half price, I totally would. Well, I mean, you get fifty dollars toward it for the thirty fifty. So yeah, it's... let's uh, let's hit him up. Let's I'm send in. him an email. One third. We'll okay, we'll Lando. Start. Lando's gonna do it. You're out, Jaron. Sorry, bud. Lando has got dibs. I'm fine with that. Just make sure you get the silicone one, Lando. You don't want. Yeah. The Should I get the bubble one. Be yellow one for sure? The silicone yeah. one would be more durable though. Yeah, yeah, you should definitely get Bumble, Bumblebee Yellow for sure. Yeah, I think I have to, don't I? Yep. All right, let's see. Uh, <clears throat> there is uh, some more personal gadgetry stuff that uh, I found interesting at CES. This one's kind of off the wall. It's called the Skytid Mask. I don't know where they get these names, but uh, Skytid Silent Mask. And it's basically, it looks like a breathing, like a heavy-duty filtration mask well not quite heavy duty it's not that big but what it does is it basically just deadens your voice oh i need so this. that you can talk <laughs> talk uh, to to yourself like on the phone and, oh is, is there bluetooth built in uh you know i didn't see if it had bluetooth built in but it would be a huge waste if it doesn't have bluetooth <laughs> microphones in there yes it, a microphone does sit inside the mask and okay there we go can connect to your phone or laptop via bluetooth yeah or a so, wire can i scream and like make fun of people with this mask i want see that's what i need the, yeah no, i need this i need this not for my, quite 
because oh. it will reduce sound by 25 decibels. So oh, at that's a, not good enough. At a normal speaking volume, you would be able to have a conversation and not have anyone listening in on it. So I can't would... be like, hey, go faster, walk faster. Yeah. I need this you for driving. Can you Don't cut normally. me off, you dumb dumb. I can't do that and yell yeah. at people. This is no. one of those gar. really bizarre gadgets you'd find at an obscure section of CES. I yeah, this. exactly. This is on the fringes. This the, is, on this the fringes. is a fringe gadget for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, they're currently on Kickstarter for two ninety nine. And once wow. they get off Kickstarter and launch officially, they'll be three ninety nine. These are ninja masks. Wow! Like I, imagine yeah, putting a, imagine like, putting a cowl on, and you are even more silent as a ninja. That's that is exactly what it looks like. Actually, yeah. it's like a, it's like the bottom half of a ninja mask. And you just put this on there. Like now, they can't even hear my breathing as I sneak cool. up on them. <laughs> mm. So yeah, it looked kind of interesting. Um, might be really good for. People that work in large open spaces or short cubicles or things like that, if uh, you know they talk, they tend to talk loud on the phone. Oh yeah, get them one of these. So you guys you ever called into a call this. center and you hear like thirty people talking yeah, in the background? Exactly, this. something like that. It would benefit, I think, quite a bit. So I just thought that was kind of cool. Uh, also, we have um, these new hyper advanced reading glasses that look like. Jordy LaForge's headset, except for the slats, they're the same thickness. They just these little, you know, go around your your head didn't right he there get, on the didn't front. Didn't he get a new? Didn't he get a new visor in the in the uh, Picard? He, he had he his, eyes, he he had his eyes fixed. Yeah. Oh, that's right. He had his eyeballs fixed. I forgot. But uh, this is very interesting because it's basically a device that has a built-in front-facing time-of-flight sensor that measures the distance of what you're looking at to your face and adjusts the lenses for you so you your eyes can see it better it works wow. it works all the way up to two inches away from from your face what so you use these and you don't have to wear reading glasses uh, you just you wear these instead. <laughs> you they, wear these crazy weird glasses instead. They won't. They but won't replace. They won't replace prescription. That but are they'll replace a hundred times reading. more expensive than reading glasses you can get at the store. But it cuts. Supposedly, it cuts down on eye strain completely, like or at least greatly. Right. So you it's can doing all the processing. You it's don't doing have all to... the work for your eyes, basically. Yeah. And uh, you have a ten-hour battery life with it for. Uh, three hours of charge via USB-C. It's water resistant, not waterproof. It is pricey. The pre-order is up right now for six six hundred ninety bucks, but it's only sold in Japan right now. And this is definitely a a Japanese style gadget, oh, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. <clears throat> that you would you would expect to see from that uh, part of the world. But man, I think it looks I think it looks pretty cool. It would work really good for, and I think the guy mentions it in the article. Um, Working on like miniatures and stuff like that, or painting painting miniatures, working on models. Oh yeah, right. You know things like that. Is it and, zoom in? Nice. And you don't have to have any. You don't have to get it fit with any prescription. It automatically adjusts based on your eyes automatically. Like it does all of it automatically. It's crazy. So crazy. Oh, pretty IPX, cool. IPX three water resistance. That's not bad. Yep. All right, uh, let's see. We also want to hit on um, OpenAI lying to people, saying that uh, you could definitely use AI models without <laughs> stealing information yeah. from the I, internet. I don't know if they're lying. They're just they telling believe the it. truth. They they're, be their truth. They, they believe yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Fully. This is their if, truth. Yeah. If you believe it hard enough, it's not a lie. It's not yeah. a, or what has it go? It's not a lie if you believe it. Right. That's the Costanza <laughs> quote. <laughs> um, so open open AI said training AI models using publicly available internet materials is fair use is supported by long-standing and widely accepted precedents we view this principle as fair to creators necessary for innovators and critical for US competitiveness um, I, I found this funny because I actually found this on Mastodon which is a repost of something from blue sky so which Twitter is completely from Twitter completely out of the question here <laughs> but uh, this guy said what's his name I need those glasses to read this close. Uh, Lone Start uh, Al, Al Boy, something like that. Anyway, he what? said, um, I, I don't know. <laughs> 
20 years ago, we were suing teenagers for millions of dollars because they were torrenting a single Metallica album. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And now billionaires are demanding the free right to every work in history so that, so that they can resell it. The this law like, only serves capital. <laughs> yeah, for sure. This is like those those lists that you see sometimes pop up that say things that are trashy when you're poor but classy when you're rich. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this this is one of those. Like things. this is torrenting millions of Metallica albums. Full stop. Like yep, what OpenAI is. is doing, and then yep. they're charging people to to utilize the product that yeah. they created to based on these things. Yeah. yeah. They, well, they they're they're currently involved in a lawsuit. I think over in the UK where they. They went and they said, "Can you please just allow us to use public works? Like, we don't we don't do so well if we have to use. If you force us to use everything that's just in the public domain, it won't be helpful." <laughs> and it's like, yeah, maybe you should have thought about where you're getting your data from before you start right. a company yeah. you know, that requires that kind of data. Because look at all the other big data companies did: Google, Apple. Now is that Apple's really starting the data game now? Facebook, Reddit. They all shut down their APIs and they're looking at their own language models now. Because they hold the rights to that. You sign that away yeah. when you sign up. When you or, when you sign up to their platform. Or maybe they should think about paying for it. Yeah. Yeah, that's not out of the question. <laughs> but look, but look, 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 how much are they worth now, just, OpenAI? But look, yeah, but look what Reddit did to right. its API calls. It raised them like a, a million percent. There's right? no way that that number is concrete. If they were to approach Reddit and work a deal, I guarantee they'd get better terms. True. Oh, yeah. True. Yeah. But still, Reddit wants their money back. Oh, yeah, for they sure. look. They look at what OpenAI did as, yeah. you know, kind of having a thief in the night. And they're like, well, mm -hmm. you're mm -hmm. gonna get, we're going to make our money back on this. Yeah. As yeah. much as I love Gen AI and large language models, in my opinion, OpenAI full stop has stolen the works of every tens of tens of thousands of artists out there. Right, millions. And they've done it yeah. and they they did it to bring OpenAI and large language models to the forefront, which has been super helpful to to society in general. Uh, but they kind of though I mean has it? I mean, I we, mean we the, think it will. But has it? Well, I think I think it's it started all the regulation. It started the thoughts. Like all, companies all made big jumps towards it, and they didn't know how useful it was before. And how how much people? Just, I mean, it should always been known how much people just want to tell their computer what to do instead of actually, yeah, you know, figure well, it out. But. And it's still way early days mm -hmm. in this in this technology. So I see I see OpenAI as being a a bridge, you know, well, foundation. But I don't know that they can s sustain. Speaking of which, um, Lando has an article here about the New York Times suing OpenAI and Microsoft. Did you not read this? This was a save for next week. I've not Where does it say Oh, that. I think this is that lawsuit I was talking about. Is this not the... Oh, no. Yeah, so this, no, is, this, this is a is, different one. I can fumble my way through this, guys. It's fine. If Owen can do it, I can do it. Bam! I didn't put got that him. One on the notes. Can <laughs> Owen do it, though? I can. I I oh, tries. double got him. I just... I just, <laughs> just like I'm about to, guys. Yeah. Uh, so this is actually pretty interesting. Wait a I'm gonna, second. I, I found this a couple weeks ago, so this one's not the most timely article in the world, but that's okay. Um, yeah. Uh, the New York Wait, Times is suing OpenAI for copyright infringement, right? So this is... I think a lot of, I'm, I'm going to say this without knowing for sure, so you guys are going to roast me, I'm sure. But I think... I want to say that this is the only like real lawsuit that's come against OpenAI for using copyrighted material and tr kind of train on copyrighted material. In the I may US. be wrong on that. But this is the only one I know of, and it's a big deal because it's the New York, New York Times. They're actually going to do big it. Big name, yeah. Yep. Um. Again, I don't have time to prep for this. I was going to save it for next week so I could prep. Well, I know. I mean, I understand what happened. Yeah. They, they're they're accusing OpenAI of taking word for word their articles and regurgitating them to people, and um, OpenAI, and you know, and that's going to be the whole case is like basically. They went to OpenAI. OpenAI literally just went and took the article and re, I mean, just said it was from it. You know how OpenAI is supposed to tweak things, change things, like put in its, it's own not words, it's, Yeah, it's not supposed to just plagiarize full, full across. And they said that uh, New York's, New, their, their cases that their, the New York Times cases that OpenAI did that. Open, OpenAI has come back and said, well, show us the prompt you did right show yep. us how you got that result because open ai shouldn't be able to do that and so for it to do that you must have asked it to and the new york times has not submitted nor are they willing to the give other, their 
their The other part prompts. of this um, mm. lawsuit is that um, the New York Times is, is, is claiming that AI models threaten high quality journalism by mm -hmm. hurting their ability to protect and monetize their content as well, right? Because they're doing those things. Um, the New York Times has since blocked the open AI web crawler from, from you know, taking their stuff. Or at yeah. least, I shouldn't say, I don't know. I, I was thinking about your conversation earlier with Jaron's point about taking their stuff, right? If they take it and use it wholesale, that's one thing. But they take it and train on it and create AI no. from it, that's a different thing. Baloney. That is, that is, you that don't is, think so? That is almost the same thing. That is the, that is the exact right reason why when, when you're in college and you have to write research papers, you got to have a very thorough bibliography of where all your facts came from. Because you have to yeah, be able. Yeah, but you're not. You're not. It's and, art, though. And, and in this no. case, it how in this case, no. in this case, it's not just credit. It's money. Right. You. But you, like they, an artist, they should but have like to the, pay. I get the money. I get the money. They should have to thing. pay for the information they took well, like, from. Well, like these no, they're not because using it in the same way you use it in a research paper, Tony. Like I'm not trying to like. No, I'm just saying. It, replace, it's even worse because they're trying to sell it on the exactly open replace replace well, they, credit. But they're with, not selling. I mean, if they use their content wholesale, word for word, yes. No, they they are selling it though. Right, they're, subscriptions. They're well, selling like the, their, subscriptions. the training and the probabilities. Well, and, and, and it's I don't the know, same it's, the same there's, idea. There's some nuance there that I'm not completely. So, with. what if you ask it to write me a short story in the style of Stephen King? Obviously, so, don't you do think that. that's problematic? To what do if that, I wrote a, has a to... short story in the style of Stephen King? Yeah, right. right? Exactly. If, how is that different from what I could do? That's the point. Artistic. So one of the things that if nobody, I drew I mean, a painting in the style of Picasso, art, Picasso, I'm not Picasso, I'm, but if I'm going to you know? say here's the difference. The difference is the amount of effort it requires to do it. For you to do that, you would have to consume all of Stephen King's, or at least a, a large quantity of Stephen King's writing, to get what his style is and then create a story similar to that whereas well, with ai the user just has to say write me a story like stephen king look at look at voice actors that like look at the new rick and morty like they were like we need another we need another rick right yeah like and, and they and just found a guy the they found of... a guy they just found a guy that can do a really good impersonation artists that create art they don't have to pay the the estate of picasso because they trained in Picasso, like they they don't have to like that's where the, that's the where the conflict and that's where all those lawsuits are coming from is how original does that, art have to be when right. most all all art is borrowed anyway? Yeah, right? all art stolen anyhow. And right. That's what that's what has to be defined by the you know. The well, I think that's what makes this this New York <clears throat> Times case such a big deal, right? This is gonna be it's one of the different. first the first like real open or the first like real oh. I'm not open. It's AI in general lawsuits that's going to set a one, precedent. And this you one know? will it's be because it's it's different because this one is dealing with facts. This one is stating that the OpenAI did not create something. OpenAI took their fact-based journalism and regurgitated it directly to somebody else and they had to pay for that. Right. And that's what they, the New York Times desperately doesn't want an app in Windows like Copilot to start going to their site pulling news stories down for you and just giving you New York times on your desktop for free. Yeah, right. Oh, like that's, yeah. that's, oh, yeah, what, that's, that's a whole thing. That's right? what that's they don't, that's cool. what they don't want. And there's no art, but not, they, I guess there's not as much art they, in New York times article as there is well, in like, and New York times doesn't even want chat GPT to pull it down and reword it into no. its own thing. And, and I think know? that the, and I, and I'm annoyed a little bit just because they can stop it. They just did. They stop the web crawler. Now the problem with that is, is that OpenAI is, OpenAI is piggybacking off of a technology that also makes them accessible, right? That's the same web crawler technology that Google does to reserve, return results to your Google search result. And so if they shut off that web crawler ability, they also block Google from displaying your results in a Google search, which handicaps them mightily when people want to go find an article, right? Or if they want to do sponsored articles or mm -hmm. ad generating revenue. So I get where they're coming from, but I also get where you could just turn off the ability to, to let the web crawler in, but that's not very fair, I guess right now. Well, so anyway, it would, it would, it would, end, it would end up being kind of like encryption keys. You, right, you would, yeah. you would encrypt all your web crawl, all, all ability to web have your content. site web crawled, and then you would hand a key to google and say you can still use it right Panic which YouTube. google doesn't which i can't see google wanting that either right They're, they don't because now 
the Wall Street Journal can, I guess, I guess it's the other way. I was going to say Google needs Wall Street Journal so people come to Google. Right. But Wall Street Journal, I think, needs Google more. Yeah, exactly. It's, a, so symbi- it's a symbiotic relationship. Google, but I think Google being the bigger player will be like, well, you'll pay to have us display your results then because nah. we have to. I don't, I don't think, think so, so because I don't Google, think so. Google wants them to be in the results too, right? Exactly. Right. Google right. wants good results so they can put ads on the page and right. charge for that. So. Right. Hmm. Interesting stuff. There's still a lot of gray area and a lot of stuff that's going to have to be defined with generative AI in, yeah. in years to come. I think so. OpenAI is going to be the whipping child for this. Like, Oh, it's the it poster. Will, board. Oh, for sure. Yeah. You know, yeah. 100%. All right. Well, that wraps it up for today. Interesting stuff. And uh, we'll have more CES coverage next week because uh, it's only Tuesday and CES runs for the rest of the week. So expect more fun stuff like that. Before we head out, though, big shout out to our awesome Patreon backers, patreon.com slash gadget spot. Thank you so much for your support in the past and currently. And if you decided you wanted to donate $6 a month or more, you get a shout out right now that Jaron has for us. Thank you to David Broshinsky, Connor Kisa, and Wiffle Ball Tony, our ultra special tech daddies. Thank you. Si se puede. Thanks, Lambo. Andy Bird. <laughs> <laughs> Be the eight year old. Travis mm. Johnson by Geek Show Arcade Help Desk Stickers at Pie Man Graphics on Etsy. All proceeds go to Lee George Cade's medical bills. Jeremy, no name, no color. Kesslow, Eric Steinman, Eric Cruz. Owen has tech cred, minus five. Um, I think he added that. No, I did not. That is there, I promise. I, Matt, mm, uh-oh. I'll send a screenshot if you'd like. Uh-oh. Matt Nelson, yes, Mr. Hand, and Mr. Spicoli in 2024. Aloha, it's our time. Josh D., Adam, Aaron Faulkner, Stuart Lloyd, Joe, there's no place like G28X0Y0Z0, Ryan M., and Adam Hecht. Thank you, guys. Thank All right. you. Thank you so much, Patreon backers. Until next time. Lando, take us out. Hey, if you've already tried to reboot, try it again, and then again, and again. Be an end user. <laughs>